Friends, welcome to E. Patashala in Linguistics. Today, this is I am K. V. Subbarao, uh, Professor of Linguistics, and today we are going to under the topic language universals and language typology. We are going to discuss the role of clitics. What are the syntactic implications of a clitic in a sentence? That's the objective of the course. This lesson. We are going to talk first the role of inclusive and emphatic particles. In this module, we are going to study the role of inclusive and emphatic particles in disambiguation. An inclusive particle, for example, is something like also. An emphatic particle is alone, only. The role of particles in uh, conjunctive participle clauses and the scope of negation in a conjunctive participle clause. Then we will summarize the whole lesson. So what we are going to demonstrate today is cutting across genetic boundaries, there are similar or identical phenomena in South Asian languages in disambiguating a sentence. Such disambiguation plays an important role in conveying the intended information with proper interpretation. The crucial formal features that have the effect of disambiguating a sentence include critics such as also, only, and as for, and the phenomenon of reduplication. We shall show that the occurrence of particles or verbal critics, the process of copying the head, and the process and the presence versus the absence of reduplication, reduplicative forms, are some of the processes that block specific interpretation and facilitate the other intended interpretation. We will try to demonstrate the notion of syntactic dependency domain helps us in processing and enables us to explain the two different interpretations of specific sentences. Let us take, for example, some data from English. You are all familiar with these sentences. Flying planes can be dangerous. This sentence has a model can, which does not exhibit agreement with either fl flying planes. So, or take this example, a similar example. Visiting relatives can be a nuisance. Sentence number one, flying planes can be dangerous, can be made unambiguous, because this sentence is ambiguous. The sentence is, has two interpretations. The planes which fly can be dangerous, or for someone to fly, planes can be dangerous. So the moment you change can to are, flying planes are dangerous. This has only one interpretation. This means the flying works like a participle, and planes that fly are dangerous. And if you put is in place of can, the model, you say flying planes is dangerous. That is, it has interpretation for someone to fly planes is dangerous. Similarly, visiting relatives are a nuisance. It could mean relatives who visit are a nuisance or for someone to visit relatives is a nuisance. You can disambiguate this sentence by having R in one interpretation, by having is in another interpretation. Let's take another example. The chickens are ready to eat. This sentence is also ambiguous. You can either the chickens are ready for someone to eat or the live chickens that are moving around are ready to eat their food. How can we make this sentence unambiguous? The chickens are ready for the kids to eat. Interpretation number one. The chickens are ready to eat their grains. Interpretation number two. Now we are going to discuss the role of inclusive and emphatic particles in disambiguating a sentence. All South Asian languages have inclusive particles. For example, in Hindi, 
you have the inclusive particle like bhi. Take this example, Ram bhi jayega. That means Ram also would go along with some other people. Or you can have the emphatic particle, Ram hi jayega, where he means he is an emphatic particle which has Ram in its scope, the subject, which means Ram alone would go. Conjunctive particles in Indian languages are, have the function of link, linking the main clause and the subordinate clause. In Hindi, for example, jakar, having gone, akar, having come, etc. And these conjunctive participles are devoid of person, number, gender features, and these are called, as you know, these are called five features. So conjunctive participles in South Asian languages are devoid of five features. The conjunctive participle in Hindi, for example, for a verb such as to do, karna, kar, is karke. Karke is a non-finite bound form and is added to the right of the verb stem of the embedded clause. For example, sunkar, having heard. Kar also has the form k in Hindi or Urdu. So sunkar or sunke, having heard, or khakar or khake, having eaten. One of the primary functions that the conjunctive participle performs is to denote sequential action. For example, Ram khana khakar soega. Ram, having eaten, will sleep. That means his, the action of eating comes first and then action of sleeping comes later. Conjunctive participles, participles also perform the function of a, a manner adverb. Conjunctive participles also function as a manner adverb in almost all South Asian languages. For example, how did you come? I came by walking. So in Hindi or in any Indian language, you can use a conjunctive participle with the verb come and that would indicate a manner adverb. They can also have the even though interp interpretation, they can have in spite of interpretation, etc. when you have a negative. In Hindi Urdu, the conjunctive participle imparts a spectral meaning by which we mean it indicates certainty when the matrix verb is reh or be, for example, you have in ten sentence, the following sentence is ambiguous between a sequential interpretation and an aspectual interpretation. Hum Delhi jakar hi rehenge, jakar rehenge. This sentence has two interpretations. One is the sequential interpretation, where it means we will go to Delhi and stay. In the aspectual interpretation, it would mean we will definitely or certainly go to Delhi and stay. Now, the question is how to disambiguate this sentence. We can disambiguate this sentence by having the emphatic particle, emphatic lytic, he in Hindi, to the right of the conjunctive participle, in which case it will have only the model aspectual meaning. Hum Dilli jakar hi rehenge. It means we will certainly or indefinitely go to Delhi no matter what. So it's an aspectual interpretation. This interpretation, you, you cannot have a sequential interpretation like we will go definitely to Delhi and stay. That is, the addition of the particle he, which is an emphatic particle, to the right of the conjunctive participle, disambiguates the sentence, and it will have only the aspectual interpretation. Then how to get the sequential interpretation? Let's take this sentence where be in Hindi, means also, Hindi or Urdu, be also, occurs to the right of the conjunctive participle. Hum Delhi jakar bhi rehenge. This has the meaning, we will even go to Delhi and stay. 
it does not mean we will certainly go to Delhi and stay. So, by adding this particle B to the right of the conjunctive participle, what we have done is we have eliminated the aspectual meaning. We are imparting only the sequential interpretation. We have the particle to, which is as per, it works like a contrastive focus marker. For example, Ram jayega, Ram will go in Hindi, Ram to jayega. As for Ram, Ram will go. So the to functions like a contrastive focus marker. Let's take a sentence. Hum Delhi ja kar to rahenge, lekin kisi se nahi mil paenge. This means we will of course go to Delhi and stay, but we won't be able to meet anybody. What is this interpretation? This is a sequential interpretation. This does not have the aspectual interpretation. Why it cannot have aspectual interpretation? The moment you have added the contrastive focus marker to the right of the conjunctive participle of the verb ja, that is jakar, that is having gone, then it gets the sequential interpretation. Another important point is for sequential interpretation, adjacency is not a must, is not a requirement. How? We will see that in a minute. Let's take the earlier sentence. Hum Dili Jakar Rahenge, where we said it has aspectual interpretation and it has sequential interpretation. Now let us conjunctive participle clauses are very mobile in Hindi, Urdu, and in all South Asian languages. I can move the conjunctive participle to the left of the matrix clause or to the right of the verb of the matrix clause. For example, Hum Dili Agri se Jakar Rahenge. Take this sentence and move it to the left. Agra se jakar, hum Delhi rahenge. We will go from Agra and stay in Delhi. This only has a sequential interpretation. It does not have aspectual interpretation. Why? For aspectual interpretation, adjacency is a requirement. For sequential clause interpretation, adjacency is not a requirement. Let us try to provide an explanation in terms of sentence processing. Sequential interpretation requires two elements to be independently processed, while aspectual interpretation, the two elements are compositionally processed. The word compositionally is important. That is how it helps. How can we define? Let's look at it in terms of syntactic dependency domain. I repeat it syntactic dependency domain. When two elements are adjacently placed, when the particle that occurs is in consonance with the projected semantic content, then the interpretation does not get disturbed. You can have the aspectual interpretation as in sentence number 11 above, namely, uh, okay. Hum Dili Jakar he rahenge. The he is in consonance with the verb to go, and hence the aspectual interpretation is not disturbed. So, in spite of having the particle he, still you have the aspectual interpretation, namely, we will certainly or definitely go to Delhi. Uh, we'll give you another example from Punjabi, an Indo Aryan language. The sentence is something like, Mai othe jakari ravanga. This sentence, like in Hindi, has two interpretations. The aspectual interpretation, I'll certainly go there. And the sequential interpretation, I will go there and stay. We will take another example from Hindi Urdu to explicate the notion of the syntactic domain. Let's take a sentence such as, Mera dost ye kaam Ek minute me kar dikhaega. Kar dikhana, karna is a verb. Dikhana is a verb. Kar dikhana together will have the aspectual meaning. My friend will demonstrate this work by doing it in one minute. The physical doing of the work is not involved. Kar dikhana means 
to demonstrate. However, this meaning is not possible the moment you have a, kind, a clitic after the conjunctive participle and kar, uh, if you have a conjunctive participle such as karke dikhana. Let's have a sentence. The moment you have an adverb after kar, do, the sentence does not have an aspectual interpretation. Mera dost ye kaam kar ek minute mein dikhayega. This sentence, mera dost ye kaam ek minute mein karke dikhayega, where the conjunctive participle karke having done occurs, and this sentence will have only the sequential interpretation. So what we are trying to emphasize is kar, do, dikhana, show, kar, kar dikhayega, will have aspectual meaning if and only if kar dikhana occurs as one unit. The moment you have the k, the conjunctive participle, to the right of the verb kar, the aspectual meaning is lost and you only have the sequential interpretation. Let's have another adverb. Mera dost ye kaam ek minute mein karke abhi dikhayega. This also would have only the sequential interpretation because you have after the verb kar, you have the conjunctive participle marker and the adverb abhi. That is right now. You can have more adverbs. Another adverb like place, mera dost ye kaam abhi karke dikhayega, yehi dikhayega. Mera, next slide. Mera dost ye kaam abhi karke yehi dikhayega. My friend will do this work right now and show it to you right here. This only has the sequential interpretation. Now we want to discuss the role of negation in conjunctive participles. How a sentence with an ambiguous interpretation can have a negative particle and what role the negative particle plays in disambiguation. That is, what is the effect of the negative particle? Does it percolate down to the embedded class from the matrix class in a sentence or it does not? That's what we are going to see. Next slide. Let's take a sentence like in 23, Ravi Rishwat Lekar Kaam Nahi Karta. Again, it's from Hindi Urdu. Ravi Rishwat bribes Lekar having taken Kaam Nahi Karta, does not do the work. This sentence can have two interpretations. Number one, Ravi Rishwat Leta hai, that is Ravi takes the bribes and does not do the work. And the second one, Ravi does not take bribes and still does the work. That means the negative nahi may have its scope on the conjunctive participle lekar or it can have its scope on the matrix verb kaam karna, that is to do the work. The next issue we are going to discuss is the role of participles, particles in conjunctive participle clauses and the scope of negation. So when the negative nahi, not, occurs in Hindi or Urdu, or the negative occurs in Manipuri or in Telugu, a Dravidian language, Manipuri is a tibeto burman language, in almost all the South Asian languages that we have seen, the scope of the negative particle could be either on the matrix verb or it could percolate down to the conjunctive participle of the embedded clause. Yeah, let's take a sentence like Ravi Rishwat Lekar Kaam Nahi Karta. Nahi is the negative particle, a negative morpheme. Lekar is the conjunctive participle, which means having taken. This sentence can have two interpretations. Ravi takes bribes and does not do the work, where the negative nahi 
has its scope on the matrix verb. In the second interpretation, the negative nahi can have its scope on the conjunctive participle, that is, on the predicate of the embedded sentence. There it would mean, Ravi Rishwat Lekar kaam nahi karta, means Ravi does not take bribes, but still does the work. Now this sentence, the moment you have the particle B, B is an inclusive particle, which means also in Hindi and Urdu. Let's take a sentence like 24. Ravi Rishwat Lekar bhi kaam nahi karta. That is, Ravi takes bribes too and does not do the work. That means the negative does not have, does the effect of the negative does not percolate down to the participle. The scope is on the matrix verb kaam karna to do. So, Ravi Rishwat Lekar bhi kaam nahi karta would have only one interpretation where Ravi Rishwat Leta hai, that is Ravi takes the bribes and does not do the work. The embedded clause in the above sentence is an adverbial clause. The entire adverbial clause can be moved to the right or to the left and the still the sentence retains its ambiguity as in sentence number 25 and 26 below. We will show. Next slide, please. When the sentence embedded clause is in right adjunction, that is, it's moved to the right, Ravi kaam nahi karta, Rishwat lekar. That means Ravi takes bribes and does not do the work. Ravi does not take bribes, but still does the work. So the sentence retains its ambiguity in spite of the adverbial clause with the conjunct participle Rishwat Lekar being moved to the right. Let us see what happens when it moves to the left. We call it as left adjunction. Ravi Rishwat Lekar, oh, sorry, Rishwat Lekar Ravi Kaam Nahi Karta which again has the ambiguous interpretation, Ravi takes bribes and does not do the work. Ravi does not take bribes, but still does the work. So what we have shown just now is the scope of the negative is not affected when the embedded clause is moved either to the left or to the right. However, the scope of the negative is affected the moment you have an inclusive particle such as B also in Hindi as we have seen in sentence number 23 above. I'm going to read it again for you. This is sentence number 23 I'm repeating for your convenience. Ravi Rishwat Lekar kaam nahi karta. Ravi takes bribes and does not do the work. Interpretation number one. Interpretation number two is Ravi does not take bribes, but still does the work. The moment you have the inclusive particle, as we have seen, B is included, the sentence can have only one interpretation, as we have seen in sentence number sentence number 24, Ravi Rishwat Lekar bhi kaam nahi karta. That means Ravi takes bribes too and does not do the work. That's the only interpretation it has. And the sentence, the other interpretation, Ravi does not take bribes and still does the work. So what we are trying to show is the scope of the negative may percolate down to the embedded conjunctive participle or it may stay, the scope may stay with the matrix verb. Irrespective, you, the scope would stay the scope, the ambiguous interpretation would remain whether you move it to the left or the right, the embedded clause. What we are trying to show is where even if you move the embedded clause to the right or to the left, the scope of negation 
may still remain on the matrix verb or the embedded participle and the sentence imparts ambiguous interpretation. However, if you have an inclusive particle, the particle affects the ambiguity and it will have only one interpretation. In this unit, what we have shown is that the notion of syntactic dependency domain is very important. For syntactic dependence domain, adjacency is a requirement. And the moment the clauses are not adjacent, the syntactic dependency is disturbed. And we also have seen that the negative conjunctive participle, the negative in a conjunctive participle construction may have its scope either on the matrix verb or on the conjunctive participle. And thus the sentence will have an ambiguous interpretation. And movement of the embedded conjunctive participle clause either to the right or to the left has no effect. However, the addition of a particle, inclusive particle such as B, disturbs the ambiguity and the sentence would have only one interpretation where you have the scope of the negative on the embedded clause. So we have shown disambiguation plays an important role in conveying the intended meaning information with proper interpretation. The crucial formal features that have the effect of disambiguating a sentence include clitics such as also, only, or as for, and the phenomenon of reduplication which we are going to show in the next unit. Okay.